I'd like to call to order the regular meeting, Monday, Janu January 23rd. Uh, meeting, uh, so please join Councilman Holman in the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I like to, Our me. Heavenly Father, we ask that you extend your wisdom to us as we make decisions this meeting to go to further our goal that continue to build a quality community. We ask protection for our fire, police, and military as well as your blessing on our employees, residents, and leaders that together we build a great place to live, work, play, and invest. And finally, we thank you for the water you are sending to us. Its importance cannot be overstated. Thank you, Lord, for your continued presence and listening to our pleas. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Council Holman, for that word. I'd like to announce everyone will be participating in tonight's regular meeting, but we have Council Member Osborne and Councilmember Stipp, who are participating via the teleconference. Are you there? Hello? I'm, I'm here. Council I'm here. You know, both of you. Thank you so much. I know how difficult it is to do this. We, we greatly appreciate it. So we have three items on the communication tonight. The first item is to recognize Larry Sarovich as a citizen of the year. And then following that, we'll be recognizing Fred Stiles of EJM Development as a Corporate Citizen of the Year. And I will read the proclamations. Lauren, do you? This one? There we go. Still can't master this. That's it. <laughs> So um, we'd like to invite Larry to come up first. We'll issue the proclamation, take a quick photo, and then give Larry an opportunity to speak. Um, after that, we'll invite Fred to come up and do the same, if that's all right. Great. Larry? Just stand over here. What a privilege it is that I happen to be the mayor at this time to be able to say this to you. Um, and then I just want you to know as I speak, you see all those voices there and the two on the phone? Uh, they're all, they all have the same sentiment. I'm just the lucky one. So Citizen 2016 Citizen of the Year Award to Mr. Larry Sarovich. Whereas Larry Sarovich has compassionately and thoughtfully served the city of Goodyear and its residents, and whereas Larry's commitment to and a passion for service to the less fortunate is exemplary, and you are inspiring. Whereas Larry's efforts to establish and develop homeless youth connection have resulted in service to hundreds of homeless teenagers throughout the greater Phoenix region. Whereas Larry and the Homeless Youth Connection initiates a host family program in 2016 with a goal of providing safe, traditional homes for teenagers in the need, and you've already recruited 23 host families. Outstanding. Larry now seeks to serve less fortunate senior citizens through the Meals of Joy food delivery service, and whereas Larry and Meals of Joy seek to create awareness about food and the insecurity among the senior citizens in the West Valley, and you're providing high-quality and nutritional meals to low-income seniors. Whereas Larry has been diligently to, has worked diligently to cultivate re relationship, and boy, you have relationships all over. You should be proud of yourself. With the local and the regional elected officials, community leaders, and service organizations with the intent of identifying opportunities for collaboration and service to all and to others. Larry's commitment to serve is an outstanding example of our community spirit here in Goodyear to seek to promote and encourage among the citizens. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Georgia Lord, the mayor of Goodyear, Arizona, do hereby proclaim 
you, Larry Sarevich, as the 2016 Citizen of the Year for your leadership, your hard work, and your dedication to our community. In witness whereof, I have set my hand, caused the seal of the city on Goodyear, Arizona, to be affixed to the 23rd day of January 2017. Congratulations. Is this working okay? <laughs> I am really honored, first of all, thank you so much to every one of you on the council and to the mayor, of course. Um, you also do many great things for this community and this city. Um, I'm very proud that I chose to move to the city of Goodyear. 10 years ago, I didn't know anybody in this city. In fact, my wife bought me a garment so I can find my way on a GPS from one street to the other. And I'm so blessed today to know so many people who ordered this run for Homeless Youth Connection and now Meals of Joy. Um, you have to have a passion. You have to have people that have that same passion to succeed. And many of you that have been there with nonprofits and whatnot, it's a hard, hard road. But it makes it easy when you have people that support that along the way. Um, I'm very, very proud of all of our volunteers through both charities. Um, homeless Youth, as you well know, is seven years in existence. And we took a step two years ago. I'm so thankful that we have Don Bogart as our executive director that has taken us up to another level. Uh, with 23 host families and growing, uh, taking care of homeless kids and giving them a home life surrounding that they wouldn't have gotten in a group home. Um, 246 kids, from my knowledge from last Thursday night, is how many we have helped since school started in August and looking at 400 to 500 by the time this school season's over with. Um, spreading out to the East Valley as well as handling the West Valley is a tremendous challenge ahead of us and the growth is there and I know for a sound fact that homeless youth is going to be here for a long time to come taking care of the homeless students and um, so I you know with the help that I'm getting it gave me a chance to look at one more avenue that I wanted to do when I first came down to the city was to help the seniors in need that need nutritional meals on a daily basis. And that we're a year in existence, we're starting to make headway. And believe it or not, geographics has nothing to do with it when you're hungry and if you're a senior. And believe me, I've found that out in the last few months that there's a definite need in that element as, a, as a, we move forward. So I'm thankful for this award tonight. Uh, and also want to recognize that there are many many great charities in this city and this valley that deserve this award. So it makes it even more of an honor for me to accept this award tonight. And uh, just to mention that, you know, a lot of effort with anything that you have a desire to do does pay off in the end. So thank you very much from all of you on the council. Mayor, thank you again for tonight. This is a very special night for me. Thank you. Because uh, council is a part of this, okay? Right. So if we could have you all kind of, and I know they're going to want to say something, but how about coming up? You want to say it now? All right, council wants it. They they need a chance to say their feelings too. Oh, all okay. right. So why don't we just start right down here with Councilman Step? I mean Pazillo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Step is on the line. He may want to take. Yeah, Councilman Step, would you like to say something? Make yeah, I'm trying to get my phone unmuted. <laughs> uh, yeah, just I'll be very brief, Larry. Uh, um, I wish I was there in person to uh, shake your hand and look you in the eye and tell you uh, what a great uh, honor it is to have you uh, as a resident in our community. And thank you so much for all that you do. Councilman Pizzillo. He's the guy with the longer hair. Yeah, That's I know. Um, anyway, I'm proud to uh, call you my friend, Larry. We go way back. I remember that first day when we sat there at Rotary and uh, a member from the school district came in and, and mentioned 
this terrible issue they had with the homeless teens and these people that were showing up at the high schools to shower because they had no place to go. And you sat there in the audience and said, you know what, we got to do something about this. And you took that little seed. What was it about? five years ago, six, seven years ago, you took that little seed and it's grown into what it is today. And uh, everybody in this council has noticed how proud I am of our residents and how I always love to put the plug in for our volunteers. And you're a perfect example of that. So with that, I thought Judy was going to start the wave back there. But other than that, uh, Larry, again, there's nobody who deserves this more than you. Congratulations. Vice Mayor Laura Tano. I, I would second that 110 110- 110%. Every time we hear all your success stories, all the lives you have changed. Um, like what Joe said, that little seed has changed people's futures and possibly generations, their families' futures. I mean, it's just amazing when you hear everything you've done. I go to tears when I, when I hear some of those young people speak and you talk to them. Um, so we are honored and, and more than honored to have you as part of our family in this community. So thank you. Councilman Campbell. So Larry, I was at that Goodyear White Tanks Rotary meeting as well. And I remember when our Rotary Club stepped out in faith to help you get started. And what a ride it's been. It's been so much fun watching you grow and and make this program into something that we're also very proud of. But it, it really fills a need in our community. And as you said, you're moving now to the West Valley. I know you've been going out of state sharing this program because it is such an important program. And we just want to thank you. And we look forward to your meals of joy taking off and doing what it needs to do. I know it. Look, Larry, I'm, I'm with you. I know. I know. Um, you have a servant's heart as well, and we, we appreciate it, and we honor you, and we thank you for all you do for our residents, Larry. And we're here to support you and help you in any way we can that's appropriate. You're welcome. Councilman know, Holman. We love you guys. I'm oh, sorry. Councilman Holman. Larry, you've come so far in seven years. You've been eloquent. You've been passionate. You have been able to share your passion and instill that in a, a large number of people that were behind you. And what I most admire, I think, Larry, is that you were able to let go, let your baby fly. You're still interested. I know you're still involved, but you let your baby fly with other people to take off and started a new embryo of a serious need that you start in our community. That takes a lot of courage, Larry, and I do admire you for that. Thank you for choosing Goodyear those 10 years ago. Councilman Osborne. Thank you. Well, Larry, I'm sending you my hugs. I really, really wish I was there. Um, You know, I've got to be with you for all of these years with the homeless youth, and um, I have to tell you, it kind of chokes me out because I know our world is a better place, and that's because you have been in it. And you are a light for us, and you have great passion, and you have truly been there for the citizens of the West Valley. And you've had um, the ability to see past the West Valley and to look at what could be for the future, um, going further into other cities in our state and, and taking your, your drive and your story to other states. And so I, I'm thoroughly proud of you, and, uh, and it's been an honor to get to work with you. Thank you so much, Larry. Thank you, Councilman. Now picture time. Here, right up in the, right by here, aren't you, Stana, huh? And I, by yourself with that. Yeah, they can't lunch. Okay. So, sorry. I'm making a date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a date. Yeah. <laughs> so if you turn around and stand right here, get it, be sure while you move to the, why don't you stand right here, right? Now, right here. Please. Yeah. You got it? Everybody uh, no. got it? No. 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 <laughs> then come over here. <laughs> How's this? I'm I too need a tall. Stool. Everybody, see? Oh, all right. Come 
still here. We're, we're still adjusting. Yes, come on up. Have you got us all? Lauren, will you take one for us? Yes, okay. that's okay. Three. Yeah, cool. One, two, three. And you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Lauren, you're going to do it. Yep, you betcha. Okay, I'm going to do the next one, okay? Yep. Are you gonna, you're going to say something? I'm going to introduce you. Yeah. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Can you come on up? And next, we're going to be recognizing Fred Stiles with EJM Development as our Corporate Citizen of the Year for 2016. This is a real pleasure. I've known you since I was on council in 2005. And I uh, really appreciate you. So let's go on for the 2016 Corporate Citizen of the Year. That, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> Whereas EJM Development is a family-founded business formed by Eugene and Jerry Moncarsh in 1973. Whereas EJM Development is now one of the largest privately owned developers in the Southwest region of the United States. And whereas EJM Development was the original West Valley property owners involved in establishment of the regional greater Maricopa foreign trade zone. That's a bigger deal. Whereas EJM development contributes to the success of the greater Phoenix, Arizona, excuse me, Maricopa foreign trade zone, it fosters growth and development throughout the West Valley. And certainly it has, has happened in good year. Thank you. Whereas EJM development has been made tremendous investment in infrastructure in good year and the greater region. And whereas EJM development and its staff takes pride in long-standing relationships throughout the community in which it develops. Whereas EHAM has a proven track record of success, which has contributed to Goodyear's growth and development. Thank you. And EJM's development has demonstrated and continued commitment to fostering the successful development through our city of Goodyear. So I'm really proud to say to you, now therefore it be resolved that I, Georgia Lohr, the mayor of Goodyear, do hereby proclaim EJM Development as the 2016 Corporate Citizen of the Year. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Goodyear, Arizona, to be affixed to this 23rd day of January 2017. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council, and actually everybody affiliated with the city of Goodyear, because we have had quite a, uh, I guess, partnership for quite some time now. I remember, I think one of the first people I met at the city was Brian, when he was economic development, trying to figure out sewer and water, I think, at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a long time. But at first of all, I'd like to really congratulate Larry, because that's pretty impressive, Larry, and... Uh, really helped out a lot of people and uh, I'd like to applaud you again. So thank you. Our, our, our line of work is quite a bit different and it's, you know, really humbling to, you know, for top to go behind Larry because of what, <laughs> what he's accomplished. We try to, you know, we provide workplaces for people and jobs and that kind of thing. And um, we got Gene and Jerry, the two brothers that I started working for in 1987. Um, had a lot of fun with them. Unfortunately, neither one is in. They're they're alive, but uh, they're both suffering from Alzheimer's. Oh. Um, so it's a little bit different. There's a new sheriff in town, but other than that, we plan on keep doing the same thing we've been doing for all these years. And uh, I I showed Harry tonight, and Karen's aware. We think we're going to submit. Uh, a pre-app for a site plan approval on the, the site just south of the Michael Lewis site 
hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Yay. I don't know. It's up to uh, so I don't. I'm not making any promises it gets built, but we're gonna at least get the site plan approved, and we'll see what happens from there. Um, so it's been fun with a lot of the stuff that we've done out here, with the selling the land to CTCA and putting in the streets and infrastructure for them, and that's been a great addition to the city. Uh, Michael Lewis, the yeah. most recent. Um, I'm glad to see that the police department took a curb cut into the new street on 143rd, <laughs> uh, which is great actually because everybody likes to have the police next sure, door. So, of course, um, it's been it's been fun. I look forward to many more years working with everybody here. Thank you. Thank you. I know you're not used to this, so but first of all, council would like to make a few comments to you and how they feel about that. So I'll start with, I'll go down, down here. I'll start with uh, Councilman Osborne on the phone. Well, Fred, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your commitment and EJM uh, and seeing the great potential and beauty and the assets of Goodyear and all these years of your partnership. Uh, it's really um, been a tremendous commitment and, and I really thank you for that. Councilman Holman. I'd like to add my congratulations and thanks for your work in Goodyear. Um, congratulations. This honor is not given lightly um, and um, it's well deserved. Congratulations. Councilman Campbell. Well, we want to thank you for believing in Goodyear and for being such an important part of our family. The CTCA site is extraordinary. It's wonderful. I love the Michael Lewis site. That's just great. And we just expect more wonderful things from you. And thank you so much. We're excited. Um, but you, you certainly deserve this award because you have been a partner with us for so very, very long. And in the good, good times and the bad times, you hung in with us. And we really, really thank you for that. And I'm very glad you met Brian when he was in economic development and he reeled you in, got you to good year. So thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. Vice Mayor Lortano. Well, it gets hard when you get down to this side, but just very much thanks for all you do and all the beauty and value that you add to our city for our residents. Um, I think like Wally said, thank you for believing in our city and you have added so much to the quality of life of our city. So thank you. Council of Azillo. Again, when you get down here, but what I would like to say is it's a team effort in this, in this city, as you saw with Larry and yourself. We're all working together for the betterment of the city, and everybody does their part, and we really appreciate your efforts. And again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. And lastly, Councilman Stiff. Yeah, there's literally very little to add uh, as the last speaker, but uh, thank you so much for, uh, for all you do, and uh, it's a great honor for us to have you in our community and uh, providing the, the buildings and the places for people to go and get and get jobs. And uh, we can't grow as a city without without the jobs and the jobs bring the homes and the homes bring retail. And that's uh, that's how this little circle of life works. So we greatly appreciate you uh, you helping us get that started. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Stiff. All right, it's picture time. I know you love this part too. Okay. And you're not as tall, so we're not no. going to have to worry about that. <laughs> so is it right here? Yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> 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 Just walk forward. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm really short. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, everybody. You're so welcome. 
All right, the next item on communication is to present a life-saving award to Margarita Bueno, whose actions saved the lives of passengers on a Greyhound bus in Goodyear. Of course, our fire chief, Paul Luisi, will be presenting. This is quite a story. Yes, good evening, Mayor and Council. I'd like to uh, invite Margarita Bueno up to the uh, podium with me. As she's coming up, um, <clears throat> it was on November 25th at approximately uh, 2.30 in the morning. Um, Margarita was operating the Greyhound bus that was coming eastbound from San Bernardino to Phoenix. When she noticed a, a vehicle in her, on her side of the highway going the wrong way at a very high rate of speed, uh, both of the vehicles, the bus and the vehicle that coming in the, in the wrong direction, uh, collided violently. In this uh, tragic moment, Ms. Bueno immediately took action to keep the bus upright, protecting her passengers from serious injury and, and death, certainly. The ability of, for Ms. Bueno to keep control of the bus as it took a full impact of the collision also saved the lives of countless other people on the highway that night. Despite having lost her front tire, which is amazing, during the collision, she was able to steer the bus safely while it slowed, eventually coming to a stop in an upright position. As the result of her actions and the presence of mind during the collision, the Goodyear Fire Department would like to bestow the highest life-saving award for minimizing this tragic loss of life to Margarita Bueno tonight. Right here. Mayor, we're also going to give her a uh, fire chief's coin, commemorative oh, coin for her as well. So. We have someone taking, oh, we do have, we have somebody from staff taking a picture? Yes. Okay. We'll just stay right up here. If you could just stay there a moment, okay. I know uh, I'm one of these mayors that believe good stories take time and people deserve to hear it. So I'm going to just turn it over to the council a moment to make uh, your remarks, uh, however you're feeling, if, if you, whatever. So Councilman Stiff, Stiff, the other one that's next to you. Councilman Stiff? <laughs> yeah, every time I try to unmute my phone, I'm having a little technical difficulty getting there, so I'm a little slow on the uptake. Uh, but I, I do want to uh, just to extend my appreciation and congratulations. Um, I know it was a very stressful uh, event for you, and and uh, I can only imagine uh, the thoughts going through your mind. But, um, you know, I think on behalf of a greater society, we're just very grateful for uh, for your sharp actions and your, uh, you know, decisive or your good decision-making uh, to help uh, keep this tragedy from becoming worse than it was. So thanks. Councilman Pazillo. Not too much more to add to that, except uh, I'm, I'm sure all your passengers are very grateful that you were cool-headed and able to bring that bus down to a, to a stop without having it roll or turn on its side. So, again, thank you very much. Vice Mayor? I, I just honestly can't imagine um, what was going through your mind at that time and how you were able to, to keep so calm, cool, and collected and, and just take those actions you did to – to save everybody on the bus and prevent other passengers or other cars from getting involved. And, and this just could have been a horrific loss of life if it wasn't for what you did. And, and so I, I'll drive on your bus anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Councilman Campbell. Well, I'm sure you, when you went to work that day, you didn't think that all of your training and everything that you had ever learned or did would come and have you use it but thank God you were trained and prepared for it. But on the other hand, it's an extraordinary act that you were able to do what you did. And on behalf of all of your passengers and in a city, we thank you so much for your extraordinary efforts, and uh, we just want you to know how much we appreciate what you did. Councilman Holman? Congratulations. I'm sure you probably never even said, I wonder what I would do if because it was horrific enough that it boggles the imagination. Um, it's impressive. You're a good woman, Margarita. Thank you. 
Councilman Osborne. Congratulations, Margarita. Um, this girl's got some skills, doesn't she? And uh, she makes women drivers all over the world look great. She's, she's our hero, that's for sure. So uh, we thank you very much. Thank you for what you did for your passengers and, and really obviously saving probably some other lives on the freeway that night. Thank you very much. Well, lastly, from the mayor, congratulations. I mean, it takes such stamina to be able to do and, and just downright guts to do that. But I have a feeling maybe there was an angel in that bus yes, that might have helped you through that. So, again, we're very proud. And, yes, could we have your name and number? Because <laughs> <what bus? laughs> we've all decided you're going to be our, our driver, our right? Driver, you yeah, bet. so put her name down. If the council has to go anywhere, we want her. So, again, thank you very much. One more time. Let's run around. Thank you. That's awesome. The next communication item is for the Parks and Recreation Department to provide council with an update on two spring events. One, the Tale of Two Cities Parade and Festival, and two, the Heart and Soul 5K Fun Run. Superintendent, oh, hello, Michael Beadle will present. Good evening, Mayor and Council. It's a pretty tough act to follow, a couple of acts to follow. Um, I didn't save a busload of people, but um, we'll do our best to put uh, on a couple of great events. So I wanted to bring a couple events for you guys that we have upcoming, some really cool events that are coming up. Uh, the first up, we have the Tale of Two Cities Parade and Festival. Uh, this event is a partnership between the City of Goodyear, the City of Avondale, and also a partner with the Strayer Mountain Community College. Uh, it's put on a multicultural uh, festival, parade, and naturalization ceremony. It really has three components to it. The first up at, at 9 o'clock, and, and this event will take place on Saturday, February 4th is the naturalization ceremony. And 125 individuals will be naturalized into US citizens, which is a, a huge accomplishment. They'll be naturalized at the actual event um, at 9 a.m. And City of Goodyear Police's own um, Officer Hart will be d the keynote speaker swearing in um, for the ceremony. Um, and the, the big deal with that is he is also a naturalized citizen himself. So it's a, a perfect, uh, perfect segue for that event. Uh, next up is the parade, and the parade theme this year is Heroes in Blue. We're honoring our uh, police departments for the city of Goodyear and the city of Avondale. Uh, Chief Geyer and Chief Nanagate from the city of Avondale um, will be our grand marshals for the parade, so they will lead about 80 uh, parade entries down the street um, of Thomas between Litchfield and Dysart onto Australia Mountain Community College's uh, campus. Um, it will conclude with a festival, and this is a really cool festival. It, it's really a cultural immersion, so you get music, you get um, live performances, you get food from all around the world. I know I'm excited to eat Australian food for the first time. We'll have an Australian food vendor up there, so I've never eaten anything from Australia, but it should be really fun. Uh, so it's, a, it's just a great way to bring the whole family out. You get to see a fun parade. You get to take part in a really cool festival, so it's a great event uh, to come out to. And then next weekend after that, on February 11th, we have the 12th annual 5K uh, Heart and Soul event. Uh, we try to dial up the rain this week and next week, so that way all through February when we have all our events, it'll be <laughs> perfectly sunny all through that. Uh, but we have our, our Heart and Soul event coming up. It's Heart Health Month in February, so we partnered with uh, Brazo West Campus, and we're going to put on a 5K walk run. You don't need to be a... a world-class track athlete in order to come out and participate. We really just want to encourage healthy lifestyles, active lifestyles in the community. And so we want people to come out, have an enjoyable experience. The route runs right along the ballpark, so the 5K route runs behind the development complexes for the Indians and in Reds, so you might be able to sneak a peek at the players getting ready for spring training. And the family fun run on the one mile um, will actually go through the concourse of the ballpark. So you'll get a little preview of, uh, of the spring training coming up as well. So all of that will take place at the ballpark starting at 9 a.m. on February 11th. It's going to be a lot of fun, and, and we want families to come out. We want um, adults, kids all to come out and participate. Great. We're looking forward to that. Thank you, Michael, for the presentation. Appreciate it. All right. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the city council on any non-agenda item. Do we have any cards? No, Mayor. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak? All right, then we're going to go to this consent agenda. Will the city clerk please read consent agenda items 6.1 through 6.6 .6 by title only? 
Item 6.1, approve draft minutes from a special meeting and a regular meeting held on January 9th, 2017. Item 6.2, approve and authorize the city manager or his designee to execute the intergovernmental agreement between the Arizona Department of Public Safety and City of Goodyear for Goodyear police officers to work off duty at events occurring at the University of Phoenix Stadium. Item 6.3, approve the December 2016 budget transfers. <clears throat> Item 6.4, adopt resolution number 17-1780, approving, authorizing, and directing the execution of the First Amendment to the Second Amended and Restated Development Agreement for Amber Meadows regarding the development of an approximate 108.5-acre parcel generally located at the northeast corner of Perryville Road and the future Harrison Street alignment, providing for authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out intent of resolution and the First Amendment to the Second Amended and Restated Development Agreement for Amber, Amber Meadows and providing for an effective date. Item 6.5, adopt resolution number 17-1781, approving, authorizing, and directing the execution of the First Amendment to the Second Amended and Restated Development Agreement for La Jolla Vista regarding the development of a 198.5-acre parcel generally located at the northeast corner of Lower Buckeye Road and Citrus Road, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out intent of resolution and the First Amendment to the Second Amended and Restated Development Agreement for La Jolla Vista and providing for an effective date. Item 6.6, .6, adopt resolution number 17-1782, approving, authorizing, and directing the execution of the First Agreement Amendment to the Second Amended and Restated Development Agreement for Padera regarding the development of a 160.4 acre parcel generally located at the northwest corner of Citrus Road and Lower Buckeye Parkway, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out intent of resolution and the First Amendment to the Second Amended and Restated Development Agreement for Padera and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Does anyone from the public wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Does anyone in the council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? All right, then we're going to go on with this. Could I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? So move a second. I heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Vice Mayor Lortano. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Lortano? Aye. Council Member Osborne? Aye. Council Member Pazillo? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Homan? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. Great. We're going to go on to the business. I would like to remind Council again to refrain from asking questions until the staff presentations are complete and there's a motion on the table. Um, we've changed the order of this somewhat. So, it, I, right, we, from the original one they saw. Yes. Okay. So Number one is still going. Bear with us. Yeah. It's going okay. to be on there. It'll be Alrighty. a little different. So, um, the first item, 7.1, is on the business to consider approving the agreement between the City of Goodyear and SRP. Water Resources Manager Mark Holmes will be presenting. Mayor, if I may, um, <clears throat> the representatives from Salt River Project are not here yet, so I don't oh, know if not. you have the luxury of moving All right, but we'll, the, that, that's all right. Well, that's too bad. We did arrange it for that, but I'm sure... Um, you, you can put it on the table for a few minutes if you'd like. Uh, it's up to you, and then go on to the next. Well, let's put it on a table. Don't you think that everybody kind of sure. think that's the sure. way we should do it? So Don't we'll just good. go on to the next one. 7.2 is the next item on business to consider the First Amendment to the Development and the Fire Service Agreement between the City of Goodyear and, NL and NNMP3, Australia Mountain Ranch, LLC, and AB Homes of Arizona. Development Director, Service Director, Christopher Baker, and Fire Chief Paul Luizzi will be presenting. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present this to you this evening. Before we get started in, uh, in to, to review the highlights of the this new agreement, we thought it was important to put how we got to where we are in context for you um, before we talk about the salient points of the new agreement. And so in a um, little bit of history, in 2006, the city of Goodyear and Ast Newland, the developer of Australia, and Tuso, who is the precursor of AV Homes, who's constructing homes in Cantamia, entered into a fire service agreement. 
And in 2006, that agreement specifically put the timing of the construction and operation of future fire stations under the sole discretion of the city. That agreement contemplated uh, that the fire station would be open and operate, operational in 2009. And then in 2008, due to the Great Recession and the uh, turmoil of the economy, the city put the fire station on hold at that point in time. Back in that uh, same era, the 2006 through 2008 era, uh, Newland um, and the city worked together and Newland deeded approximately four acres of property to the city, which the, st the city still owns, just to the east of Willis Road on, uh, excuse me, just to the east of Rainbow Valley Road on the north side of Willis. And then in the fall of 2015, uh, the council began inquiring and there was some discussion regarding the status of fire service in Australia. In January of 2016, Chief Louise and I did a, a staff presentation for you outlining uh, some development, the history of the development in Australia and the, the relevant triggers. And then the chief followed up in February discussing response times and the CIP. You all remember in August of 2016, this, the city selected a consultant and began work on the fire station study. And then in December of 2016, the chief presented that study to you. So back in the summer of 2016, uh, we as staff, uh, Doug Sandstrom, uh, the chief, myself, and uh, city attorney began having discussions with Australia and AV Homes to revisit and move forward with an updated fire service agreement. And the result of that effort was is that we have a, a, a new document before you this evening, and it was agreed to by all the parties in early January of 2017. The agreement is a three-party agreement between the city, Newland, and uh, AV Homes. The agreement requires both capital and operations and maintenance contributions. The existing four-acre parcel of property that the city owns on Willis Road will be reconveyed back to Australia. The agreement is valid for 10 years or until the last O&M payment is made. And the only trigger to initiate beginning the fulfill fulfillment of the obligations is the city giving notice. There is no trigger on however many building permits or number of homes or amount of traffic or calls for service or anything of that nature. Simply the city controls the destiny of this and uh, simply gives notice to move forward with the project. The future fire station site uh, will be deeded to the city from uh, Australia and the value will be given to it at $80,000 per acre. The total capital contribution towards the fire station is uh, capped at $5.87 million, and the agreement recognizes the fact that both Australia and, um, and Cantamia AV Homes have previously given the city $841,826. Of that, the city spent $177,000 on work associated with the four-acre Willis Road fire station site, and the balance is $664,826 that the city can use as its discretion to move forward to begin the design work of a new fire station. So this map on this slide is from the 2016 fire station study and you'll see that arrow that's going to the, to the uh, circle with the blue, um, I believe it's blue, um, star on the map. Uh, that is the intersection of Willis Road and Australia Parkway and that is the optimal location from the fire station study. So uh, there is language in the agreement that, sets, that says and indicates that Australia and the city will work together in good faith, in good faith to identify a fire, sto lo fire station location that is in conformity with the uh, optimal location from the fire station study. Regarding the capital contributions, the city gives, uh, must give 180-day notice uh, of intent to begin design. And then when that takes place, the, um, these other major capital contributions uh, will be triggered. The fire station, uh, excuse me, the fire truck uh, payment would be received just prior to the station opening. So that one is a little bit further out on the horizon, but, but they will pay for the fire truck. Half of the capital funding 
uh, was be payable to the city within 45 days of the city issuing the notice to proceed for the construction of the station. And then the remaining 50% of the capital would be due within 45 days of the station being at the 50% completion point. O and M, uh, the O and M payments would commence at the first quarter after the permits for the station have been issued, meaning the the building permits, and the O and M payments are four hundred and fifty two thousand dollars per quarter for nineteen successive quarters, and the O and M payments will be adjusted on an annual basis to reflect changes in the CPI. There is a reimbursement component of the agreement as well. The developer will be issued uh, credits that are applicable to the fire impact fees when a home is uh, constructed. And the, the amount of those credits is equal to the capital contribution that they pay, not the O&M, just the capital. And then should the city institute a cost recovery program um, and we receive those funds, then uh, the balances would be due to the city or paid back as a reimbursement. So there is that opportunity to capture greater funding uh, should the city move forward with that. Other highlights of the agreement, just for your consideration and knowledge, is that uh, the developer is expressly released from any obligations associated with the 500 building permit trigger that was instituted way back in uh, the early 2000s. The agreement also expressly indicates that as long as they're fulfilling their obligations associated with the agreement that no building permits will be withheld and that it also, again, puts the timing of the fire station project uh, solely with the city. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, will the city clerk please read resolution number 17-1783 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 17-1783 authorizing and directing the execution of the First Amendment to the Development and Fire Services Agreement, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out intent of resolution and First Amendment and providing for an effective date. Thank you. And please have a motion, a second. So move. I heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Vice Mayor Laura Tunnell. Open for council discussion. Councilman Fazillo. Uh, listen, I appreciate all this effort on this negotiation. Uh, for the general public at large, this isn't the first time we've seen this. We've been working to try to get this done for quite a while, and we appreciate you keeping the council in the loop. Uh, I'm pleased what we've come to, uh, to be honest with you. when we, To me, this is a very reasonable approach. Um, the study itself identified when the actual stations would be in place, but I'm not going to speak for everybody on here. But for myself, uh, and the others will probably chime in there later, we felt that 2025 was too far out there based on the different uh, distances between what's there now, redundancy not built in, and the fact we needed to get this thing done. Okay. As a result, I like the fact the trigger is once we actually notify is when this whole process can start. One of the questions I had, if you go back, I think it's a slide or two. One more. Uh, one more. Uh, one more. I'll get there. One more. It's the dollar amount. There it is, right there. The 664826 is that part of the $5.8 million, or is that in addition to the $5.8 million, or is it inclusive of the five point eight? We, the balance of the 664000 is that part of the five point eight? Inclusive. Is that what we were on? It is included in that $5.87 million. Okay, so all of that's capital. used for the fire stations and all. Just, and, and in the total for O&M, Chief, it's pretty close to what it's going to take to operate a station? Yes. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, yes, so we've been working with finance on the, the cost for the firefighters, the personnel benefits, and then also the O&M for what we currently pay to operate a station today. today. Okay. Question for the attorney. The once we uh, uh, once we vote on this, and I'm not going to assume anything and say it passes. All right. The actual point in which we start the actual ticker is that a separate action because of the um, what's the term I'm thinking of the uh, 
um, open meeting law and what was posted, is that something separate that on a later date has to be? Madam Mayor, members of council, yeah, that would not be an action item tonight. I think uh, city manager intends to have those discussions with you okay. in conjunction with the budget this, this spring and the starting probably here next month or two. Okay, but Mike, I got, and again, I guess you answered it, but just for clarification, we can't do it anyway right now because of the open meeting law, because it's not on the agenda. We've got to do this, and that's a separate action that's itself. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Vice Mayor Lortano. I, I am very pleased that all the parties were able to work so well together, and I think um, Councilman Pazillo hit it well. Sometimes the general public doesn't know that when there's negotiations going on that obviously there's legal reasons why we can't start spouting out exactly what the agreement is. And I think that's really important to know that the community partners, everyone's been at the table and they actually did this rather quickly. Um, and they've always been on board and they've both been great community partners with the city. So I am very pleased with this. This is well needed. My concern is I, I wouldn't want to wait till the, the budget. I think that question that Councilman Pazillo asked until june to to start the trigger so we could start our planning of it because that's another six months down the road so that's where i'm at but i am very happy with this agreement and i think it'll provide the services um, that that area needs so thank you and thank you chief for all your hard work and everything councilman osborne sorry thank you uh thank you to staff first of all for um your hard work of getting everybody um, all on the same page. And uh, thank you to Newland and A.V. Holmes. I really appreciate your dedication to um, our partnerships. And also, you know, I know that your commitment and ours together for the safety of our citizens is the most important thing here. And so I really do appreciate that. I look forward to... Um, our council discussions, I think, coming fairly soon uh, regarding when that uh, station will be coming forward. Thank you. Councilman Stipp? Yeah, I, uh, I echo Council Member Osborne's uh, appreciation for staff's hard work and, uh, you know, the, the work of and the willingness on Newland's behalf uh, in, uh, in the home. So um, I think, as it's already been stated, um, we knew that this was coming down the pipe, uh, that we have been working at it for some time when we had the discussion a couple of months ago. Um, so it, it's great to see it come through. I appreciate the speed at which we were able to get this done. Um, and on that note, I echo uh, Council Member Loritano's uh, concern that waiting until we get through the entire budget process is a, is a wait too long. Um, and, uh, and I think we've got some other issues that we need to have some very serious discussions about. But um, waiting on, on this particular fire station and the relocation of Station 181, um, waiting until July is not, in my, in my opinion, is not, is not the option. So um, I hope we uh, are able to move those processes through as quickly as we were able to move this one through. Thank you. Councilman Campbell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we do want to thank Newland and A.B. Holmes for working so diligently with the city and with our fire chief. There was never a question that this was not going to be done, but we just needed to figure out where the right place was and get the funding in place because a fire station isn't cheap. We don't want it to be cheap. We're talking almost $6 million dollars to start a station that just gets it built and gets it running for a year. And then you've got the expense every year thereafter of equipment and staff. And we understand that. Last meeting when we approved some plotting up in Australia, there was concern that perhaps we were acting in haste. But we knew this agreement was coming tonight. And we knew that as a council, we would have an opportunity to talk about it and um, hopefully pass it. And we felt that uh, in good faith, that's why we uh, acted as we did last meeting. And we're just very happy that this is here. I agree with all of council so far saying we don't want to wait until June, till the budget session is over. 
I would like to challenge our city to work with Newland to find a site as quickly as possible, get it deeded as quickly as possible so that we can serve notice. Because once we do that, we still have to hire firemen and train them. And we're looking at a year, year and a half out, aren't we, Chief? So time is of the essence, really, because even though we're approving this tonight, it's still going to be approximately... I'm guessing maybe two years before the station is up and running. And all, just to be honest, I don't know how else they could do it any quicker. But um, I do would like I would like to see the trigger on an agenda item uh, as quickly as possible, so that we uh, can move forward with this. Thank you, and thank you, Chief, for all you did, and you too, Christopher. We appreciate it. Councilman Holman, thank you. Um, and those are my thoughts. Um, we all know that when we're working with government, historically, we have um, the protagonists and the antagonists and the, the, the challenges uh, that ha have to do with those kinds of issues. And I think this is a great example of developers and city government recognizing that there was a need that... that um, had come up more quickly maybe than we thought it would, but that we needed to address it immediately. And it was almost simultaneous that everybody recognized that and got to work on it. Um, I think when you're studying government, these are the kinds of, of issues we need to look at when we're studying um, the of the processes that we go through this would be an example of how you can work together. We don't uh, that um, staff and developers and um, the fire can can look together and be proud that they addressed it they move forward on it and um, we have um, a plan and it's a, an expeditious plan um, and I think that should be a source of great pride to to uh, the developers to uh, our fire department to Paul and and to you Christopher and, and to, to, to you, Brian, that whatever is in place allowed for this kind of a, a, a procedure to happen. Um, and I know I have great pride in that because it, it, it didn't just happen. Um, leadership made it happen. Thank you. Kind words. I just want to mention that um, I appreciate the study being done, even though we made an adjustment in it. But I think it gave us the visual that we needed to make the decision and uh, so it made it much easier. Mm -hmm. And one comment made, we are supplementing during this period of time uh, additional fire up in Australia. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I thought that we would, no, we're not going to because that was addressed the other night. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm no. not sure. Uh, no, ma'am. The uh, current response would come out of fire station 182 okay down to that area and right. until our station is constructed. Want to clarify it okay yes christopher M mayor thank you mayor um uh, from a staff perspective i'd like just to say uh, what a pleasure it is to work with the outstanding team the city attorney's office rourke in particular the chief and doug we all came together to get this done and it was a real pleasure from a staff perspective again working with very responsible developers who are contributing to our city, adding rooftops, but also have the public safety aspect and concern for what's going on with the residents who buy homes. It's a real pleasure to work with people like that. Yeah, thank, I, you. Uh, thank you for those remarks. They were worthwhile, they're right. Thank you for mentioning them. So, oh, Councilman Fazillo has one more comment. Yeah, you know, I, I tend to agree with the um, others, and you'll probably hear that maybe at the end of the meeting, Mayor, as far as the triggers are concerned, to try to move that up. But I think it's also important as we as we go forward, the planning, because the study also talked about the 181 rehab and also talked about the West. So it would be nice to get a financial modeling or planning to see how all this may pencil out and, and kind of go and how it may impact our current revenue flows as well, not just the uh, one in Australia but the 181 and, and how that would be done. So I think that would be a value to everybody on council to see how all that kind of ties in. But I tend to agree from a, from a uh, um, 
uh, throwing the trigger, you know, as soon as, as soon as possible that we can do on that because of the fact that you only have that one. And, and if for some reason, the worst case scenario, that one's out running around and there's nothing there to service um, because of some of the distances, it's, it's a downside for our, our citizens. So um, I appreciate the study. I appreciate all the efforts. I know the attorney put a lot of time in, in working this out. I appreciate Newland taking the time and knowing how important and stepping up as a great partner for the city of Goodyear, getting this done as well. And the, and the homes, I appreciate Baby that. Homes, so, yeah. and again, it's, it's a community effort and a, and a great partnership. So again, all thank you. Vice mayor. I, I just want to say, I, I think it's important that the, the trigger then after the trigger, it's still a six up to a six month window that we can start some work. So we can kind of simultaneously do the trigger and still work within the budget process, but at least we've started, we're not delayed six months. Is that how it kind of works? I, I see the chief was shaking his head. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Again, I want to compliment Newland and AV Homes. Thank you very much. And also I want to compliment the citizens. They, they, they weighed in on this, made a little noise, told them how important it is. And, you know, that helps the council make decisions, too. So uh, everybody, it was a team effort. So thank you very much. We're going to vote on this. So roll call vote, please. Council Member Osborne? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Holman? Aye. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes seven zero. Thank you very much. Well, now we'll go back to seven point one. Is that what we're going to do? So, the item that was on the first item on the business um, is to consider approving the agreement between the City of Goodyear, Goodyear and SRP, and welcome Mark Holmes, Water Resource Manager. Thank you, Mayor Lord, and members of the Council. I am very excited to be here this evening and presenting what I believe to be a landmark uh, opportunity between the City of Goodyear and Salt River Project. Partnership opportunity is quite extraordinary um, and groundbreaking for many reasons, which I'll cover in my presentation this evening to you. Also joining me this evening are uh, Dave Roberts. He's the Associate General Manager from Salt River Project. And also you Kristen. Stand so people can, audience knows. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. We also have uh, Kristen McJunkin. She's the Director of Water Rights and Contracts for Salt River Project. Welcome. I did want to provide some background information before we go into the agreement so some of the terms are more familiar, some of the infrastructure um, of the SRP system that, will be able to, that would be able to divert the city's CAP water uh, supply to the city. So historically, SRP water service was concerned with delivery of what is termed project water, or water that was developed within the Salt and Verde River watersheds. The water is required to be delivered and used within the boundaries of the Salt River Project service area. The map above shows the confluence of the Verde and Salt Rivers uh, reaching the Granite Reef Diversionary Dam on the top right. Let's see if I can get a mouse to show you that. So right there is the Salt River. Just to the east is the confluence of the Verde and Salt. And that is the Granite Reef Diversionary Dam right there, of which that dam can divert water into the Arizona Canal on the north or the Southern Canal on the south and feeds the entire 400-plus uh, square mile service area for Salt River Project. In total, uh, comprising uh, 1,265 miles of canals, laterals, and smaller channels. The Central Arizona Project Canal was constructed adjacent to the Granite Reef Dam, whereby in the early 1990s, an interconnect facility was built that could divert CAP water into the Salt River Project system. SRP could now deliver either project water or CAP or non-project water to its customers. Because CAP water is not considered project water, it can be delivered and used outside their service area. So the satellite image on the left shows the Granite Reef Diversionary Dam right there. The Salt River flowing here. Sorry, it's a little small. You have the Arizona Canal here where water is flowing into to their service area and the Southern Canal here. And if need be, water can be diverted into the actual river, Salt River bed for doing recharge. On the top of the image, you just off this image here, the CAP canal flows to the south and actually then goes into a pipe and follows this alignment right here and actually goes underneath the river in this pipe and surfaces just to the south 
on a small hill right here where it's going back into a, an infrastructure of a canal system delivering water now to the south. On the image on the right, you can see just kind of a cross-section cartoon showing, again, where the canal ends. You have a pipe that's delivering the water, uh, the CAP water underneath the river, flows up this little siphon and hill here. Now, in this pipe, there's actually a diversionary uh, infrastructure where water, CAP water can be diverted into a smaller canal that flows down this, this small grade into the SRP system, and that's shown over here, the pipe where it would be connected underground from this point to this point, and that's CAP water then flowing down this, this infrastructure into the SRP system. This facility is known as the CAP SRP Interconnect Facility. Um, I'll probably refer to it the rest of the evening as the CSIF uh, infrastructure or CSIF. Now CAP water then can be diverted into the, again, the Arizona or Southern Canal systems or the riverbed for doing recharge projects. So let's go ahead and talk about the agreement uh, terms and components. The first provision of the agreement is that SRP is agreeing to lease 25,000 acre feet per year of their CSIF capacity to the city. The city currently has 17,742 acre feet of its CEP water supply allocations and the lease capacity will cover this allocation and additional future allocations of CAP water. SRP is a primary stakeholder, um, shareholder of the CSIF and controls more than half of its capacity. SRP currently owns slightly more than 470,000 acre feet per year of the total capacity for the CSIF. Also, uh, SRP is agreeing to initially serve 8 million gallons per day that's the equivalent of 8,961 acre-feet per year of the city's CAP water to, be, to an agreed-upon point of delivery. So these provisions within the agreement are groundbreaking in that SRP will be delivering water to an entity entirely outside its service area. So for the City of Goodyear provisions, the City of Goodyear was agreeing to initially pay SRP $13 per acre foot, which equates to four cents per thousand gallons for the CSI, CSIF lease. This will initiate the first year Goodyear orders its water through the CSIF. The City of Goodyear would also be agreeing to initially pay SRP $59 per acre foot, um, or equates to 18 cents per thousand gallons as a water transportation fee for wheeling our water through their entire system to the west. And the City of Goodyear would be also agreeing to pay an annual administration fee to, to a salt water project. The agreement also creates what are known as authorized representatives uh, between the City and SRP to meet and confer, uh, to discuss, locate, add or delete points of delivery to the City, adjust the CSIF capacity, and perform other additional administrative duties. The City of Goodyear recognizes that SRP has priority water deliveries to association shareholders and other third parties that pre-exist the proposed agreement before you through existing decrees, contracts, and Indian water rights settlements. The authorized representatives will work together to ensure annual water delivery schedules. Also, the City of Goodyear would be ahead of any subsequent agreements that SRP, SRP may enter into the future like this one. And when the city is ready to take additional water beyond the 8 million gallons per day, the authorized representatives will meet and confer to determine future additional points, if needed, of delivery, water delivery phasing schedules, um, if system improvements are needed to deliver additional volumes of water to the city, and if additional CSIF capacity is needed. These provisions within the agreement underscore the versatility of the partnership and that the authorized representatives coordinate logistical issues, and water deliveries and plan ahead to overcome future challenges. The city and SRP are, are still working and pinning down the first point of delivery uh, to the city that would be uh, in the vicinity of the Avondale Boulevard just north of the West Broadway Road alignment. This location has multiple canals delivering water to a single point. So we're looking at pinning this down right now. The agreement, the agreement will be initially in effect for 50 years with an additional 50-year renewal. This will ensure the Arizona Department of Water Resources recognizes the city's full CAP water allocation 
and we meet our 100 year assured water supply requirements for our CAP water being physically and continuously available for 100 years. So this agreement provision underscores the robustness and longevity of this partnership. So staff recommends approval of, this, of the CAP SRP interconnection facility or CSIF agreement between the City of Goodyear, Salt River Valley Water Users Association, and Salt River Project Agricultural Improvement and Power District. Should you approve this agreement, the Salt River Project Governing Board will need to approve the agreement uh, to become fully in effect. Uh, they are scheduled to meet on February 6th on 2017. Uh, should the SRP Governing Board approve this agreement, we will begin working with SRP staff regarding additional partnership opportunities. That include water supply opportunities, recharge opportunities, recovery well and drought firming opportunities. These potential partnership opportunities may lead to subsequent agreements of which we would bring back before you and the SRP board. Staff would also reach out to our neighboring municipalities and evaluate other potential partnerships. And before I conclude my presentation, I'd like to turn over to uh, our city manager, Brian Dahlke, at this time. Um, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Uh, just a couple things, Mayor and Council. Uh, when Mark first heard about this opportunity, we had to put sandbags on him to keep him from elevating. Um, there, and, uh, but I want to point out some things, just the uh, in, incredible point we are with this uh, agreement, uh, the spirit of cooperation that we had with Salt River Project as so we went through this. Uh, and it's all about leveraging the partnerships, the relationships that go into that, um, and, and especially for this legacy project that takes us out for a lot of years, um, many, many years, decades um, for this water service. I, I would like to, and it was done in the last presentation, as far as recognizing uh, team members that were part of this, and I wanted to take an opportunity, Mayor, to do that as well. Please do. Uh, and that is, uh, and just raise your hand, um, Dan oh, Cotterman. stand. All right, stand. <laughs> Mayor's order. Make him, make him get up. <laughs> So, uh, Dan Cotterman. And stay standing. Rourke please. Massey to my right. Attorney, getting him to stand. Yeah, come Doug on. Doug Sandstrom, <laughs> Finance Director. Javier Sedovich, Public Works Director. Uh, Mark's already standing, Mark Holmes, and Mario Saldamondo uh, as well. And we had others uh, behind the scenes, trust me, but uh, these were the folks that were uh, really working this day in and day out. And I have to tell you, just uh, and it's already been recognized, the SRP representatives here. Yeah. Mayor, may they sit down? <laughs> they can sit down. <laughs> but, um, except for you, Mark. But uh, anyway, in, in working with them, and the thing about Salt River Project, I had the uh, opportunity to work with Salt River Project for 16 years prior to coming to the city of Goodyear. So from that standpoint, knowing a lot about their culture and how they approach uh, partnerships and leadership, I got to see it firsthand, and we're going to be able to experience that as well. We had opportunities, and I worked in the district side or the electric side, but still saw um, folks from coming outside of Arizona and even outside the country. I uh, do specifically remember a, a group that came over from Egypt to learn how SRP, who is considered not only a pioneer, but one of the best uh, in the world as far as managing water, uh, especially in an arid, um, arid area like this. So... It is, uh, there's a lot behind the scenes, and, and I didn't, uh, and I know council will um, do recognition as well, but some of this I just thought it was important to point out. And uh, Mark, I do know that uh, we absolutely value this, and I do believe that, uh, Mayor, if it's okay, I think one of the representatives from Salt River Project, uh, Mr. Dave Roberts, would like to say something. Good evening, Mayor Lord and members of the council. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mark. And I just also want to thank your staff, a wonderful staff, uh, very professional, great collaborators. And that's what's really, as you know, and you've heard me speak before in the past, that you know, building robust, resilient water supplies in the desert, and we all live in a desert here, takes a lot of regional collaboration. And this is just one example, of, and a great example of that. Um, Salt River Project was born out of regional collaboration and partnerships as well with the federal government. And we still have that partnership today. As a matter of fact, uh, later this year, we will celebrate 100 years of operating the Salt River Project, and we've been around 114 years. So uh, we plan on being around another 100 and 114 years as well. So um, 
but it's a great opportunity. We look forward to being a part of your future and, um, um, and working with your staff and implementing this agreement. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for your words. I appreciate it. All right. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody else in the audience like to speak? All right, Mark, did you have something else you wanted before I ask? Uh, Madam Mayor, thank you. Just real quick, I just wanted to mention also that uh, it's been a, a team effort, as Brian mentioned. Um, uh, SRP has been uh, just top-notch professionals, outstanding uh, partnership opportunity. Uh, just want to recognize Dave Robert. He's a visionary. Uh, innovation, uh, it's been a pleasure working with him and his team, and also uh, the efforts of uh, Kristen McJunkin. She really did the heavy lifting on this agreement and formulating that, so thank you very much, you too. That's it, Mayor. I'm happy to address any questions you may have for me or S. Over Project tonight. Thank you. Uh, then could I have a motion a second to approve the agreement between the City of Goodyear and the Salt River Valley Water Users Association and the Salt River Project Agriculture Improvement and Power District? So moved. Second. I heard a, a motion from Councilman Holman and a second from Councilman Bazillo. Open for council discussion. I'll start on the, uh, the telephone. Councilman Stipp. Uh, Mayor, the, the only question that I have, just to make a point of clarification, is we are simply approving the agreement for the for for this to take place. We are not we have not established uh, paying for how we're moving the water from uh, point A to point B. Correct? Is that correct? Could you repeat his question for the audience and then you give your answer? So if I heard uh, Councilmember Stipp correctly, he is asking the question that tonight before you are just approving the agreement which is how the water would be, uh, our CAP water would be diverted and transported through the SRP system to a point of delivery. But nothing beyond that of how we get that water from that point of delivery to the city or its treatment is being considered. Just see how it's going to get to a point of delivery for the city. Thank the agreement you. at hand. Any other questions? All right, that's what I thought. Um, and, and, I, and I think I echo what, you know, the, the thanks that everybody has had. This, um, having been... Uh, you know, the, the AMWA representative for a number of years, um, and we've had these discussions about water is going to be our biggest challenge, and uh, it is, it's great that we have a solution that we can actually, that we can actually use and something that we can do today, um, and you can't, you can't beat the price uh, for it, which uh, is kind of a huge statement in and of itself, given the cost of uh, water these days, but... Um, I think uh, it shows the great intergovernmental cooperation between SRP and and uh, and their, their partner cities and their true desire to really serve the state in uh, in water delivery. And and uh, if this agreement says nothing, it says volumes about that. So um, to the SRP representatives out there, I, I appreciate your willingness to entertain it and to uh, and to help us bring some water to the West Valley. And thank you, Bill, for your service on AMWA. And so I'm going to call uh, Councilman uh, Osborne because she's now has taken your place on that committee. So, Joanne? Thank you. Boy, this sure is one of those evenings that I, I really wish I was there in person. And, and it really makes me sad. Um, I would like to thank uh, our city manager and staff for working so hard on this. Um, looking for a, a water solution for our city was, you know, vitally important. But uh, mostly thanking SRP this evening. You know, we know that you are a, a solid and positive partner for our state. And so working with our city uh, and collaborating with us is really a, an honor. And, um, and we realize, and I especially have seen this, even though I'm a native, I've seen this uh, being on AMLive. Just being um, part of being in Arizona is that you see the collaborations um, all over our state when it comes to water is something that rest of the nation, you know, should learn from because I think we've done a pretty pretty good job. Um, as for our citizens, you know, this is this is really a, a monumental time for us because uh, we have known that we've had groundwater and remediated water and uh, recycled water, but we've never had surface water. And this is vital to our future. It is vital to our growth. 
And the fact that we can have a partner in SRP allows us uh, to plan that future in our in our own terms and to um, be able to, you know, guide our destiny. And that's, that's huge for Goodyear. And um, I'm very excited that I know this is, you know, really the first step um, and we have other steps to go. But, uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of dates um, in history for Arizona when it comes to monumental dates in water. And for Goodyear, this is one of them. So I'm, I'm really pleased and excited about it. Thank you for everybody that was part of putting this together. Thank you, Councilman Pizzillo. It's not a whole lot to add to that, except I really appreciate all the efforts of staff to the point where for those that are watching um, this, this show, or show or this council meeting, <laughs> it is. It is. did you just call our council? Yeah, our council show is that we've had many, many options that you brought for us. This has been a thoroughly vetted process because we know eventually we're going to have to get off the wells and we know we're going to need water for our future growth. And this is a solution that they looked hard and fast for, came to about, what was it, about five different options. And to be honest with you, this is the one that makes sense. And the fact that SRP is stepping up and helping us, I really want to thank you because this is going to help us sustain and meet those needs as we go forward. So, again, thank you to staff. Thank you to SRP. Really appreciate you stepping up. Thank you. Vice Mayor? I, I also want to thank SRP for this very um, – fundamentally, you know, futuristic agreement. And I want to thank Brian and his staff for, again, looking outside the box to this agreement. And, and Mark, who makes water fun, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to still comment that um, Councilman Pazillo, I'm surprised he didn't say it because he said it earlier, cities are in the forever business. You need water. You can't grow. You can't have a city. You can't have parks. You can't have people if you don't have water. And with everything... Um, we got water today, but with everything that's going on with the drought and, and, and the planning, that this is just very foresighted and looking to our future. So I think this is a wonderful agreement. We couldn't have a better partner than Salt River Project. They're known in the Valley. They're part of the, the state's history. Um, so you can't have anybody that you could trust and go into this, you know, possibly 100-year century um, long partnership than Salt River Project. So I am very pleased with this agreement. Um, and as Councilman Pazil said, uh, we probably won't be around for the renewal. <laughs> but uh, we, we do appreciate all the hard work everybody put in on this. Thank you. Councilman Campbell. Loved it, and I said, "Boy, I want to be a part of that." So we do thank you. Um, all that you have done. This on. Councilman Holman. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm just going to make a comment. It's going to be very brief. But this, this, th this agenda was very exciting to me tonight. If you look at the leadership, corporate leadership, the partnerships with SRP, with, with the developers, it, it is absolutely... Um, it takes talented people. It takes sincere people who just want to make their part of the world a better place. And I, I thank each and every one of you for that, for taking that responsibility and making it happen. This is truly an exciting evening. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Thank you. Thank the team. Thank our entire staff. Um, you know, Goodyear has gone advanced in many, many ways, uh, but it's because of the, the know-how, the intelligence, and the devotion of our staff. And compliments to the council and your policymaking. 
And Salt River, thank you so much. I, I mean, I've had discussions on this with some of the other mayors before, and they said, what? Never happened. Are you kidding me? So um, it really feels good. Uh, and, and so um, the ownership has spread, right? Uh, and we're looking forward to it. So again, thank you very much. So now we have the a pleasure of voting on this, right? All right. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Congratulations. Hey. And now, Mayor. Mayor. My, Mayor. I guess it's been it's been feeling like that all night. Thank you. Hey, Mayor. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Man. So now we're going to go backwards to 7.3, and I first of all want to apologize and thank you for your patience for uh, switching this around. Um, so uh, this is to consider an, uh, this is to consider approving a contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks Foundation to refurbish the youth side baseball softball field on Falcon Park, and it's a contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks Foundation. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Very excited uh, this evening, um, and to just piggyback off of Councilmember Holman's comments about the importance of corporate uh, partnerships and giving. Uh, this is along those lines as well. Uh, so we couldn't be more pleased this evening to announce that the Arizona Diamondbacks have selected our Falcon Park um, for their next community field build project. This field renovation is valued at over five hundred thousand uh, dollars and will enhance opportunities for both youth softball and youth baseball. The key here is youth baseball and youth softball. Um, and so we're very excited about expanding that opportunity. Um, the Diamondbacks Foundation, the Diamondbacks Foundation works with corporate sponsors and players to expand baseball and softball opportunities throughout the state. This program has resulted in 39 new or renovated fields, uh, resulting in over $10 million of corporate giving. You can see here some of the, the fields that uh, they have done uh, in Parker, Arizona, uh, Aaron Hill Field, Randy Johnson in Phoenix, uh, Brad Ziegler Field in Prescott. And I can tell you that uh, my kids have grown up playing on, on, on these fields provided by the Diamondbacks as well. Um, I would like to, we have, we're uh, pleased tonight to have some special guests uh, join us um, and I would like to recognize them and have them come up, please. Uh, we're joined tonight by Debbie Castaldo. She's Vice President, Corporate and Community Impact for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, we're also pleased to have uh, APS, uh, Patrick McDermott. He's the Community Affairs Manager, your friend and ours. Mm -hmm. And then we also have some of our users and our uh, users in, in providing youth baseball and softball uh, to our community. Uh, we're joined tonight by Goodyear Little League President Josh Guthrie. They, Mayor and Council, they've been sitting for a while, so we might as well get them up, right? Get them all up. Okay. Yeah. Um, also with uh, Goodyear Little League, we're pleased to have really a mover and shaker for many years in Goodyear Little League. Uh, we can call him a power player. Uh, Mr. Jim Beaumont, he's past president and treasurer. Um, and, of course, he's joined by his wife, Heather, and, of course, uh, their two sons, uh, ball players uh, Ryan and Reese. Um, and also uh, from Litchfield Park Little League. Um, uh, Litchfield Park Little League is a um, partner of both Goodyear Little League and the city of Goodyear. They actually provide girls softball for our community. And uh, so tonight, representing Litchfield Park Little League, we have Jason Burgess, who's the president. And uh, Jason is joined uh, by his wife, Lisa. And then, of course, uh, their children, who are also participants, Elise, Gavin, and Eileen, and, uh, and Caitlin. And I was told that uh, Elise and Caitlin um, are actually missing practice to be with us this oh, evening. Oh, bless their hearts. Thank you. Couldn't be more pleased to have them with us uh, this evening. So just to go over some, some project details, the renovations for Falcon Park will include 
the famous bobsod. That's the same turf that uh, the big leaguers play on. Um, new fencing, new dugouts, um, the new infield, uh, bleachers, uh, new lighting system with controls, um, bullpens with dugouts, uh, you know, you name it. Um, it's going to be a state-of-the-art youth baseball field. We couldn't be more excited. Uh, the construction is scheduled to begin uh, right away as early as February 1st, and anticipated completion date is April 1st. Oh, great. Wonderful. Yeah. Here's Falcon Park. Yes. The location that we're looking at it is, is the yeah. park on the bottom there, or the field at, located at the bottom there, uh, will be renovated to accommodate uh, this use. We showed this picture to our maintenance staff. They assured us that the grass is green, <laughs> that the, the Google imaging camera wasn't working correctly that day. So oh, sure. they, they did say it was uh, a result of the non-growing season when this was taken, obviously. <laughs> um, as part of the agreement, uh, the uh, Diamondbacks will have exclusive naming rights for the field. Um, we're not prepared to announce the player that uh, will be contributing his name and dollars to help fund this project along with APS and other um, contributors. Um, but I can tell you that once it is announced and when the Diamondbacks are ready to do that, it will be a name that is, will be very familiar to mayor and council as well as all of our residents. So we've got a real jewel here, I, I have to tell you that. A golden jewel, a, okay, good. A golden jewel, a little hint there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the, once the, uh, the improvements are, are made, the city will own the improvements and we will be responsible for maintaining them. Because this isn't a new amenity, it's a renovation. The maintenance uh, side of this will be um, uh, taken care of by our, our operating uh, budget right now. Again, the just looking at the fiscal analysis, we're receiving in upwards of $500,000 uh, for, for this project and value. Um, the city will be responsible for permitting and plan review fees. We're anticipating this to be in the ten dollars to $15,000 range. In addition to a, asking for your consideration and approval of the construction contract this evening, um, we're also uh, asking council to authorize a budget transfer of $15,000 from the general fund grant match budget to cover these expenses for project uh, plan review, associated project and plan review. And so with that, Mayor, um, with our user groups behind us and, of course, our corporate partners, the Arizona Diamondbacks and APS, um, we're here to answer any, any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? If you do, raise your hand because I have a big group in front of me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Then can I have a motion and a second to approve the contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks Foundation and PIMEX Contracting for the refurb re refurbishment of the youth size baseball softball field at Falcon Park and authorize a budget transfer of $15,000 from the general fund grant match budget to pay the related Goodyear plan review and permit fees. Um, do I have a motion and a second? So move. Second. I had a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Councilman Holman. Up for council discussion. Councilman Bazillo. Again, thank you very much for all your efforts. Uh, I really like that ROI, though, 15 versus 500. Thank you very much there. But again, uh, people stepping up in the community. Uh, it sounds like a, a repeat from every time we bring these people up or all everybody up. But because of you, that's what makes this a great community. It is. And again, I know this will be enjoyed for years and years and years. Thank you, Diamondbacks. Thank you, APS. Thank all of you there for participating in this. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Vice Mayor Laura Tano. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the Arizona Diamondbacks and APS um, for being such great corporate um, volunteers and neighbors with us. So that's just absolutely wonderful. And thank you for your generosity. And thank all the volunteers and the kids who get to go out there and play. I think this is going to be a wonderful addition. Um, these fields are absolutely wonderful to play on. Having grown up playing softball for like 10 years when I was about their age that, you know, our fields didn't look like this. So I am extremely jealous and I think that the, the youth will just love it. So thank you so much. Councilman Campbell. Thank you very much. Um, 
I just have a question. Uh, are we also doing a snack bar for at, at this facility, or is it just refurbishing the, the fields? Yeah, this, this agreement is just to refurbish the field. Uh, there are no plans right now for, for a uh, snack bar at that location. Okay. All right. Well, I do want to thank the Arizona Diamondbacks and EPS for being such a wonderful community partner. I've seen the fields that you've done elsewhere throughout the Phoenix area, and I've said, oh, my gosh, I'd love to have something like that in Goodyear. And when I saw it on the agenda, I was so thrilled. So thank you so much. It means a lot to us, but it's really going to change the lives of our children that, that use that park. And we'll take very good care of it, and we do thank you so very much. Councilman Holman? I just want to, I want to say thank you, too, to, to our corporate partner. To our corporate sponsorships. Um, partnership is everything uh, in getting things done. So thank you, Diamond Dance. Thank you, APS. And thank you, volunteers. Um, working together, there's nothing we can't accomplish. And I thank each of you. Councilman Stipp. Oh, Mayor, I have, I have nothing to add. Nothing to add. Nothing. Thank you, Bill. Uh, well, Councilman... Uh, Osborne is, I don't think, she uh, she's not there right now, so that's why I'm not calling her. Okay. So, yeah, uh, what a team play this is, huh? This yeah. is a home run. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, please. Mayor, uh, if, if I may, uh, Deb Castello with uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yes. The pleasure. Yeah. Mayor, Council, thank you so much for having us. I can tell you that this is as much a thrill for the DVACs and APS as it is for you. Um, Jim Beaumont and Goodyear Little League helped the Diamondbacks start uh, one of the largest Little League outreach programs, and now it is the largest Little League outreach program in the nation. This year alone, we'll provide 50,000 Little League uniforms to 100 Little Leagues in the state of Arizona, and it's the largest program of its kind. And I can tell you, any time I called for help in trying to build these types of programs and understanding the volunteer efforts and the community efforts that it takes to run a Little League, Jim always took my call and helped really be that partner. And so it was very fitting um, when we decided that Goodyear would be a home. You have Thank phenomenal you. youth programs here, yes, unbelievable youth programs led by great volunteer parents and families and leadership that are so passionate about this community. And we're so grateful to have an opportunity to be here. And we could not have done it without Nathan. Yes. I can tell you that he had the speediest fingers ever when I called <laughs> him and said, I have an idea. Um, but in the end, I have to tell you that credit for this location really goes to APS. Patrick McDermott is very well known in this community. He is an extraordinary member and, and someone very passionate. And it was Patrick that said, I hope that there's an opportunity that you guys will make sure that Goodyear is at the top of the list. And so I really do have to give Patrick credit for helping us find this site and for pushing those buttons and making sure we evaluated 18 sites um, that Goodyear was at the top of the list. We know that this is an investment in a great community, in good people, in great families. I can't wait to watch these girls play. We're doing many more fields with skin in fields to make sure that our girls have equally great places to play softball and to make sure that softball thrives and girls can go on and go to college and get the education and go on and do whatever they want to do. So on behalf of APS, Patrick is the bomb. We love being in Goodyear. And if you've never heard about the dedications, these dedications for these fields are so much fun. Um, and our player that has agreed to name this field made a $50,000 donation to make sure that we could do everything on the wish list and that you get exactly what you want for this beautiful field. And so he's excited to, uh, to see it come to life in a few months, and we'll have a heck of a party to say to welcome him to, uh, to Goodyear. So thank you, Mayor Council. Thank you to Nathan and to Diana and the staff for helping us get it done, but mostly thank you to APS for sharing in the cost. We couldn't do it without them. Thank you. Thank you for your work. And I have to tell you, it's delightful for the people in Pebble Creek because when Ron and I pass that ball field yeah, uh, and go in that Indian school gate, I can't tell you how many, pe how many young people are on those courts 
And on those fields, uh, no matter what time of day it is, uh, it's just a joy to be able to see that we are furnishing an athletic event for our young people. So terrific. So now the discussion is done. It's time to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mayor and Council, it's been requested for a quick picture. Oh, yes. Of course. Of course. Mayor, go down. So are you thinking to bring everybody there, or you want with the picture there? You want all the council all, or just mayor? Or or you're just going to take the group there. Just the take group? the group there. That's fine. We understand. Let's oh, mayor, you ought to go down. Let's just, you should go down. Mayor, no, no. no, let's, let's, let's just okay. get ready to do that. See, what did I tell you? Yeah. We love the Diamondback uniforms. They're beautiful. Yeah, they are cute. Isn't that cute? Yeah, he's got his Diamondback uniform on. Mm. Thank you very much. Wow, exciting night. Yes. My goodness. Good night. Yes. That's the most fun agenda. Yeah, it is one of the most fun agenda. Okay, let's see where we are. 7.4, have I got it, City Clerk? All righty, here we go. The next item is 7.4 is to, on the business to consider approving the use, use of budget fiscal year 17 fleet funds. That's a tongue twister. Uh, Fleet and Equipment Manager, Superintendent Charles Schneider to present. Hello, Charles. That's me. That's you, I know. Yes, Welcome. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, for me to come before you today uh, on behalf of the FY17 Fleet Replacement Plan. Um, tonight, I'm seeking your approval to spend in excess of $500,000 with two different state contracted vendors, both Courtesy and Midway Chevrolet. I'm estimating to complete the plan, we would need $1.1 million to do so with these two selected vendors. Uh, if approved, this would allow us to complete the light duty, uh, the light duty vehicle fleet replacement plan. Um, I would come back in a subsequent council meeting uh, for your approval on the heavy duty fleet replacement plan, which would consist of the three fire trucks that are slated for replacement this year. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. All right, could I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion by Councilman Stiff and a second by Councilman Holman. Now we're open for council discussion. <laughs> He's still Pazilla. <laughs> I've got a question. Yes, Councilman Campbell. Well, I just have to ask this question because it's blaring right smack in front of me. Why is uh, our police officers getting a 16 car and everyone else is getting a 17? able to is it um, cheaper maybe I know man we were able to front load um, the fleet replacements for the police department okay and we were able to buy those one July of this year okay as opposed to the productions for F for uh, 2017 models weren't slated to begin until okay uh, I think it was September okay so that's why all right thank you very much I'm going to interrupt in here so we don't have anything on the screen uh, for the public to see uh, of the numbers or anything. Um, do you think that would be helpful? Or? Uh, well, well, I don't know. I don't, don't know think if there's nothing. the roster or not. There we go. Yeah, I, there we go. I, I just feel a little bit more comfortable with that. Yes, All right. I'll now recognize Councilman Pazello. First of all, I think this is a uh, a great thing for the council itself. Remember a while back when we spent all the time determining the capital replacement fund, pretty much a depreciation schedule, which he knew the importance of setting funds aside so that it, capital uh, equipment, when it became in need to be replaced, didn't have to fight for operational money. And the fact that we built that 
in the budget, and we've had that going for a few years now, makes this possible. So, again, I think that's um, a kudos to all the members on this board here that decided that it's good to have capital replacement reserve funds set up. Without it, um, they would be fighting for everyday operation. So again, this is the reason why you see this tonight is because we took the time to set those funds up. So again, thank you for bringing these things through. Vice Mayor, did you? Uh, very, very briefly, I, I, I agree with Councilman Pizzillo um, when we see what um, we're, we're, we're getting here. Um, just because this is a question that we've talked about before, but so the general public knows, after we replace this, where do the older vehicles go? If you could tell the people listening at home that. Uh, yes, ma'am. The, the retired uh, vehicles go to a surplus auction, and they're auctioned um, through a auction company in Phoenix. And then we get the proceeds from those. That's correct, ma'am. Thank you. Anybody want to comment? All right. Well, thank you very much. We're going to take this to a vote. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. I, Bill, I'm sorry I didn't include you in this. Uh, did you have any comment? You wanted to have a comment after the fact? No, ma'am, I'm fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. I think this brings us to an end, doesn't it? No, we got one more. No, you're one for that. 7.5 is to consider uh, is item on business to consider approving the budget expenditures to construct the Goodyear Boulevard improvements from Yuma Road to Ashula Parkway. And our presentation is by Manager Troy Tobot. Tobias. Tobias. Thank you, Troy. Troy. It must be the end of the meeting. <laughs> it's been a long night, huh? <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Troy Tobias, and I'm a project manager with the Engineering Department. Tonight, I'm here to present a construction contract with Combs Construction for the Goodyear Boulevard Phase 2 improvements. You have an Elmo exhibit here. We'll just, hopefully it's focused. Just a little prehistory. So I brought this exhibit to kind of show some of the uh, what we did in August of 2015. We completed what's in red here, which is phase two of the construction. And uh, that was the north half of Goodyear Boulevard and over on Sherman you know, temporary construction. Temporary traffic signal. Let's get this mic a little closer. Uh, the southeast half wasn't constructed because the, the sat site was, was um, in the way. So what we did is uh, deferred the second half of the project, which is this phase two. And the phase two will commence with uh, some sat site grading, which will reestablish the, the use of that sat site. And then we'll continue to finish the construction of the median and the southeast of uh, Goodyear Boulevard, which you see here in blue. That also includes the permanent traffic signal at Sherman and Goodyear Boulevard. Uh, we have continued to uh, coordinate with BASIS and Desert Ridge School. And in fact, I just sent them an email the other day saying, hey, we're going to council on Monday. And uh, they've uh, acknowledged a few things that uh, they're looking at doing as well, particularly Desert Ridge, about mm -hmm. helping the, their traffic cycles and stuff on site. During construction, one of the considerations that we made is to make sure we don't activate the new signal and open up the other half of the roadway until July when school's out. That way there's a little less con confusion that would occur during that process. Pending approval, uh, Combs Construction would start grading the SAT site in approximately mid-February, and that'll take about 30 days to do that grading. And then at the same time, they'll order materials like the traffic signal materials, which are very long lead items. And then there'll be a, a small, probably 30 to 60 days of, of lag time until they'll come back and we'll coordinate so that the activation of the traffic signal will be in July. Uh, that way we uh, can do the grading on the SAT site as soon as possible without delay. We're anticipating the traffic signal and the Goodyear Boulevard and everything be completed by July 28th. Any questions? 
in a moment. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Is there anybody who would like to speak on this subject? All right. Then can I have a motion a second to approve the budget expenditure of one million six hundred and fifty one thousand twenty two and twenty cents to construct the project number ST one four oh four Goodyear Boulevard Improvements, Phase Two, Yuma Road, Australia Parkway. Do I hear motion? So moved. Heard a motion by Councilman Stiff and a second by Councilman Holman. Open for oh, council no. discussion. Pazillo. It's Pazillo. Oh, Pazillo. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, open for council discussion. Um, would you mind getting me some um, parameters of, of where this is? Because uh, you don't identify anything on the left over here. So. Airport. Well, yeah. If I can zero out here without losing too much focus. Yeah. I identify this. Identify these corners for me, please. So you're yeah. So so top top here is uh, the north. So this is Estrella. Parkway, and then here's here's Yuma, and this is Goodyear Boulevard, right. and then Sherman. And this is is this Desert Edge up here? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, Desert Edge, and then Basis is to the north there. Right, and this is where we have where's Basis? Oh. Yeah, ba here's Basis right here, and this is Desert Edge. Okay, and so, we have a light there now. Can yeah, the lights here. Another light in. This will be this is Sherman. Yeah. So right now is a temporary. Oh, yes. Span mm -hmm. wire, and okay. this this will be converted to a permanent structure. All right, and then the, where it says new signal on uh, Astrea, there's a signal there now, right? That is correct. Yeah, I, I should have changed that on my exhibit. I recycled this from the phase one, so that was a new okay. signal that, during phase one. And, and, yeah, because sorry. There were signals there, and okay. Yeah. <laughs> now it's corrected, Wally. <laughs> So that, that works. <laughs> uh, traffic signals are my favorite subject. Oh, mine too. I like that. <laughs> we've, got, we've got another one coming soon there at Earl. Uh, oh, great. Pearl. Well, uh, okay. So, well, we'll talk to the traffic engineer when it's really gets installed so that we can have a little bit more uh, timing better at that signal. Yeah, once we get the permanent signal and then we have all the movements, right. uh, that'll be at that location. They'll dial in a lot better. I mean, th those, you know, the right now the temporary span wires only go so far. Right. And so once mm -hmm. we open up the, all the movements and both sides of the road, it'll get much better. Well, thank you. Now I, I, I got it. I know where it is. Thank you very okay. much. Any other discussion? Thank you, Wally. All right. Let's vote on this. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nine. So it's passed. Yeah, we're going to go to 7.6. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank Why you. do you ask? I just want to make sure. Oh, okay. The last item on business is to consider the job creation agreement with KPS Global Inc. Economic Development Director Michelle Lowry to present. Michelle? I think I was going to be wrong with you. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, let's see if the PowerPoint's up there. Thank you. So as you said in your introduction, this is about KPS Global, an exciting announcement we had last week. Uh, KPS Global, uh, for the public, is a leading manufacturer of walk-in refrigeration units uh, with display product that's display products at grocery stores. So when you walk in, get your milk, creamer, frozen products, uh, they uh, make those uh, those. Uh, panels. Uh, they were for formed in late 2015 by a merger of Kaiser Panel Systems and Hill Phoenix. Kaiser Panel Systems was an existing employer in Goodyear, has actually been employing um, folks in Goodyear since 1986. Um, they're headquartered in Fort Worth, Texas with two other uh, manufacturing uh, facilities, one in Goodyear and one in Piney Flats, Tennessee. In July of 2016, the Arizona Commerce Authority, the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, and the City of Goodyear began working on a project called Project ICE, and it has a code <laughs> name there so that uh, people didn't know who it was for uh, other facilities that might be uh, shifting employees and so forth. So KPS Global, although they were um, located in Goodyear, they did make a 
did do, uh, upon the expansion, uh, they did do a multi-state search for expansion possibilities. So we were in a site selection process. So in late August of 2016, KPS Global made the decision to expand in Goodyear. Um, they could not announce until uh, January 2017 due to related business decisions. Um, but the announcement was made publicly last week. Uh, Kaiser Panel Systems was operating at 3831 South Bullard Avenue, south of MC85 in the Phoenix Goodyear Airport. They're now operating at 3801 South Cotton Lane. It's the former SunTech facility uh, located between Elwood Street and Commerce Drive. They leased 119,000 square feet of the 195,000 uh, square foot building. Uh, Scholar Alibert has some storage in that facility as well. And there's uh, the location, if you can see that with the red arrow there and the, um, the red uh, lettering there for KPS Global, that's their new facility. You can see it's right next to Amazon, uh, Macy's there uh, to the east, and then uh, the new Hudamaki plant um, to the west. Uh, the agreement provisions with KPS Global to create 85 net new full-time positions, so that's on top of the 75 that they already were employing, uh, Kaiser Panel Systems were employing. Uh, they will provide a net new full-time positions with an average salary, salary of at least 31000 and at least 65% of a full-time employee's health care insurance premium. They also invested uh, $2.3 million in capital equipment and tenant improvements in the facility. Uh, the agreement provisions for the city of Goodyear were to rave or reimburse, and at this point it's a reimbursement, um, up to a maximum of 100000 in expedited plan review fees and permit fees. Uh, ESI Corporation, which is the uh, an, uh, third party uh, economic analysis that we conducted, estimates that KPS Global's expansion will total more than $557 million in total economic input over the next 10 years. Increased property and sales tax revenues generated by KPS Global, as well as its employees, vendors, and service providers, are also a benefit. Direct revenue to the city is estimated to be $180,239 over the next 10 years. Uh, so other positive impacts that I wanted to point out of this uh, job creation agreement is keeping an existing Goodyear company in the city. They did look at other facilities uh, in neighboring communities, also in other states, as I mentioned before. Um, it could have uh, ended up in a plant closure here, so we're very fortunate here, rather than an expansion of plant closure, so very fortunate. Um, also filling an existing facility that, that SunTech uh, vacated. And I'm just going to do some of the, uh, the folks uh, from KPS Global. They're at their board meeting here. They couldn't be with us. Their board meeting event is tonight. You will have an opportunity to meet them. If I could just have Elmo uh, on real quick. Just wanted to let you see the uh, new sign that they put up. They're very proud of it um, on the facility as well as the, um, this is kind Ooh. of there. And uh, let's see if I, it's a little grainy. Uh, but this is their new uh, facility, and uh, sorry, the picture's a little grainy, but they wanted to make sure and show this. They're very sorry they couldn't be here this evening. And then if I could go back to the PowerPoint. Thank you. Uh, so um, the ribbon cutting will be Thursday, and you'll be able to greet um, members of the um, board of directors as well as executives in the company, as well as uh, employees at the facility. So very excited about this and love to take any questions or, or comments from you. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Will the city clerk please read resolution number 17-1784 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 17-1784, approving, authorizing, and directing the city manager to execute a job creation agreement for KPS Global Incorporated, authorizing city staff to take actions consistent with terms of resolution and agreement, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Could I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Pazillo. <laughs> second by Vice Mayor Laura Tano. Open for council discussion. Councilman Campbell. Well, we're looking forward to meeting um, the KPS folks um, because we're always in negotiation with companies like this. We're not allowed to reach out to them until we formally uh, adopt 
whatever we need to do to make that move permanent. But we do want to thank them so much for, number one, staying in Goodyear, but number two, using an existing facility. So we're really excited about that. And we look forward to welcoming them to our city on Thursday and uh, tell them how happy we are that they're here. Well, thank you. They and look thank to you for all you did oh, too, well, thank Michelle. You. Thank you. Councilman yeah. Stiff. Uh, Mayor, I'm having some te technical difficulties, but um, I'm, I'm glad uh, we're able to keep, uh, uh, I, I know them as Kaiser Panel, so I'm glad we're able to keep them. And, and uh, it's a great, um, it, it's another um, slow movement toward uh, building those uh, necessary buildings. Um, I know we all want retail, but um, in order to get retail, we have to have jobs and keeping a a good employer like uh, Kaiser and having them expand in our city is very exciting. So I'm very appreciative. Very much. All right, then we're going to be ready for voting. Let's do a roll call vote, please. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Holman? Aye. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 6 0. Great. Well, we've come to almost the end of this. So does council have any commentations, reports? And I'll start with Councilman Stipp. Do you have anything, Bill? No, ma'am. Thank you. Anybody on the dais? All right. Does the city manager have anything to re... Oh, Councilman Holman, I'm sorry. I just wanted to mention briefly uh, the art exhibit that is at the library right now. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I got to say, wow, do we have a community? It was raining and it was cold and the room was full of people the night of the reception. But I would encourage you, if you have not seen the current exhibit, it is absolutely marvelous. And thanks to all the people who came out and supported the art and the artists, as well as the art commission. You're absolutely right. Thank you. I, I also attended, but the room was full. Uh, and uh, and they stayed for a while. It was it was a very nice evening. Thank you. Next, anybody? Yeah. Vice Mayor. No, yeah. just when we add something to the agenda. Part. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. So, City Manager, do you have anything to report? Uh, Mayor and Council, I have a couple of announcements. One follow-up item for sure. We we are looking. We will be looking at the timing of the trigger uh, for the fire station up in Estrella. It's also kind of what we're looking at as we're. Um, evaluating revenues, expenditures, uh, the, uh, uh, the fire stations as well when we're looking at, at trying to bring some of those online. Uh, but uh, we did get that direction from council to really take a hard look at the triggers for when we can try and expedite up uh, in Estrella. And then regarding announcements, I do have a few. The Goodyear uh, Police Department, their school resource officers are conducting what they call a point in time homeless count tomorrow. That's right. Uh, actually, yeah, Tuesday, January 24th, starting at 5 a.m. And that, so that is uh, sponsored by MAG, Maricopa Association of Government. It's an annual event that's conducted throughout the Valley. So it's uh, an ability for us to be able to interact and learn more about those individuals and perhaps families that are f uh, facing homelessness right now. So after the count, report will be forwarded to council with locations and numbers and, and some of those details. Um, so I wanted to point that out. The other, congratulations, uh, uh, Michelle, on KPS Global. They are doing a ribbon cutting, and that is on Thursday, January 26th. You're all invited to that as well. Um, so uh, what time is that? 3. 3 p.m. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that was on your calendars. And... Western Sky Middle School celebrates its 25th anniversary, silver anniversary. So that will be Thursday, 5.30 to 8. And they will have vendor booths, obstacle course. This has to be for kids, not adults. Uh, mm -hmm. Obstacle course, food trucks, and we'll have our Goodyear police on display. They have a great working relationship with the school. They'll have police vehicles there as well. A silent auction will be selling uh, memorial bricks, which celebrate the anniversary. So go with a big checkbook. And they are expecting several hundred people there, but the mayor, council, employees are invited to attend that event if you're uh, available. Lastly, uh, just as a reminder for those that uh, have the ability, the, the schedule, uh, um, there we are going to be 
having a memorial service for Daryl Crossman this Friday. Um, as I talked about previously, he did pass away after a long battle with cancer. And the, they did have a memorial service back in Wycliffe, Ohio, where he was from. This Friday, it'll be um, really all uh, the many friends that Daryl has here in Arizona. It'll be at the Skyway Church at, on Van Buren, um, just uh, west of Bullard Avenue. And that is, again, Friday at 10 a.m., just uh, so you know. That's all I have. Is there any inquiries to staff from the council? Yes. I, I think Vice it was our, already covered about the triggers, but I didn't know how, since it's a new procedure, how we officially ask you, but I think you've already got it, so we're good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yep. Councilman Gambo? I have several inquiries uh, or inquiries for the city manager. Uh, I was over at the library today, and there's a tremendous amount of standing water uh, in the parking lot. I know we can't do anything about it quickly. Um, and I'm hoping that perhaps whenever we start the construction of the beautification of in front of the library sometime in the next two or three years, we can do something about the water uh, drainage because it drains where all, where, when you park in front, you can't get out of your car without getting water up, especially when we have downpours like today. And our library is used so much every single day. So I'd appreciate that. Uh, I was at a meeting this morning, and I was asked for an update on Winco. I could not give them one. They also asked me how well Harkins was doing, and I said, great, there's lots of cars out there, but perhaps uh, if you have any uh, update for us with that, and if there's any update on the mall, uh, we would like that. And also I was asked, once again, are we, is the light at Earl and Bullard going to be really done by February? Do we hope? Um, Mayor and Council Member Campbell, uh, we'll do it this way. They're, instead of responding to all those sure. now, we will be responding to those in the okay. manager's report this week. That'd be great. Thanks. And, and get all council updated on that. Well, okay. I, I will say about that light yeah. that it, it makes one look at it and say, hey, listen, when you put up the light, and there's not the infrastructure in there, obviously, yeah, that nothing. some of the other ones, that this is an afterthought, mm -hmm. you know. It takes a lot it of work. It does take a lot of so, work. So, you know, my answer to the people is, hey, listen, you're getting the light. It is taking some time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work they're doing under that dirt. I know. So I don't think that's difficult. And I have to tell you, the mayor, we're breaking all the records at the theater. Oh, I'm so glad. Good. Statewide. I told them it was I a lot of cars. How, I don't know how you missed it because it was announced. Was um, it? And, oh, yeah, we've been talking about that. It is smashingly successful. Well, everyone's hoping if it is that smashing, it'll make the mall folks move ahead. That's that was the premise of the whole conversation was if it, if they're really doing that well, is is the mall aware how well they're doing? Yeah, it's a perfect da da da. Would well. you please tell just repeat about the agreement and what the agreement was? Our extension. Can we do that? I'm looking well, at the lawyer. <laughs> so am I. Yeah. So you did. I didn't. Yes, so the uh, agreement for the mall, so th this uh, phase put in the Harkins Theater as well as a pad sites, two pad sites for retail to be out uh, in front of that on McDowell Road. And as by doing that, then they have an, uh, uh, an extension to have an additional anchor. Harkins counts as an anchor. Sure. Um, so if they put an additional anchor plus 300,000 square feet, 300 or 350? 350. Three, 300,000 square feet of know. retail, that uh, then they will be meeting the requirements of the current development agreement. But that is by December 31st, 2021. But they have met the extension one. They have that's, met the first extension. Yes, they, they did meet the amended agreement. Good. That had to be done by December 31st of this past calendar year, and they were completed in October for those two pad sites in Harkins. Thank you. You bet. Any other questions? Yep, Brian? that's it. All right, the next meeting will be a work session on January 30th, 2017. But uh, Councilman Stiff, do you have anything you'd like to say before I adjourn the meeting? No, ma'am, thanks for keeping right. me on. I want to appreciate, thank you for calling in and sticking with it all this time. So uh, the work session on, there will be a work session on the 30th. Um, and a work session on February 6th. With that, I'm going to, during the meeting.